Hi, my name is Ed Weehan. Welcome to this episode of Our Ventura. I have with me today Jorge Rubio, Deputy Director of Airports for Ventura County. Jorge, thanks for being with us today. It is my pleasure. Good. Ed. Tell us a little bit about the Department of Airports. Well, uh, the Department of Airports has been in existence uh, for a long time. We do manage uh, two airports, uh, the Oxnard Airport and the Camarillo Airport. Um, the Oxnard Airport is a, a commercial service airport, even though at the time we don't have um, airline service. The last uh, commercial service that took off from Oxnard um, happened in June 8th of 2010. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are looking to reestablish that service, probably to San Francisco, Phoenix, um, uh, or any other airport in the Bay Area, where a real destination, not just LAX. Right. And um, at uh, Oxnard Airport, we do have um, um, a lot of uh, rental car companies that uh, still serve the community. The, at the moment, there's four rental car companies that um, basically if you live in Oxnard, that's the place to go if you want to rent a vehicle. At uh, Camarillo Airport, um, we have 650 acres. Uh, Camarillo Airport is um, the former Oxnard Air Force Base. Mm -hmm. And um, that airport was deeded to the county back in 1976. The Department of Airports has been managing it since 1985. And uh, it is categorized as a national asset, so we're very lucky. Basically, what happens is the FAA looks at several general aviation airports um, in the nation and they categorize each airport. So Camarillo, we happen to be a national asset and uh, we're really happy about it. Mm -hmm. And what we do is uh, we provide um, uh, general aviation services and commercial services, services uh, for the citizens of uh, Ventura County. Between both airports, we have about um, 900 um, tenants. Mm -hmm. uh, that includes uh, owners of uh, small aircraft, charter aircraft, large businesses. Uh, we also manage uh, close to 700 acres. And um, as, as, you ca as you could see, we are responsible for everything that occurs at those airports. So um, it's, a, it's a big job, but uh, we're helping, um, helping to continue to grow mm -hmm. the airports into, a, into the community, if you want to call. So a, a lot of people probably in Ventura um, may think, aren't there other airports here in the area? And why aren't they under the county as well? Obviously, Santa Paula comes in, which I think is a private airport. Sure. So to be clear, there are just the two airports that come under your jurisdiction. There's uh, several airports in Ventura County. There's a couple of uh, heliports. Um, we as the department, we only manage Oxnard and Camarillo airports. Mm -hmm. Santa Paula Airport, as you sure. said, it is a private airport. Uh, there's a couple of uh, shareholders and they own the airport. They manage their operation. And we also have uh, the Navy base, obviously, that's a uh, Department of Defense facility. And uh, they manage that, that, that facility as, as, as their own. So we really don't have too much to do with it. We coordinate any special events with them, but uh, they're yeah. on their own. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I would guess, like, there's a control tower at both the airports, Oxnard and Camarillo? That is correct. Yeah. Um, we have uh, the federal control tower at Camarillo. It is owned and operated by the Federal Aviation Administration. Mm -hmm. And at Oxnard Airport, it is a, um, a contract tower. So we actually, uh, with the airport, we own the building and we lease it to the FAA. And they are in charge of providing the controllers in order to, to manage traffic. It is interesting because between um, both of the towers, yeah. uh, we're close to 200,000 operations um, uh, a year. 200,000, wow. Uh, an operation is a takeoff and, and or a landing. And, or, and or a landing, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, huh. Um, maybe you could just give our viewers a little, just an overview of the history of the airports, how we here in Ventura got sure. them and how they're different. Sure, well, um, back in the day, uh, you're talking about the 1920s, 30s, 40s, um, aviation was uh, a big deal, and it is a big deal today. But um, back in the day, it was it, in its infancy, so everybody was trying to get a, their own piece of land, um, a strip, basically, in order to make an airport. Uh, there were several airports in Ventura County. Some of them are closed, um, and uh, we're lucky to have Oxnard and Camarillo the way that they are today. Mm -hmm. But uh, for in Oxnard, for example, the, um, Howard Hughes, um, he started flying uh, one of the test aircraft back in 1934, and um, that's because the county had just installed um, a, a piece of grass, basically, in order for, for pilots to come in and see what they could do. Huh. And um, 
And uh, soon after, the county started building um, a, a paved runway, and uh, a couple of airlines started to come in. So if, if you actually go on Wikipedia, uh, yeah, which, yeah. Uh, which uh, will give you some facts, you will see that there's been a couple of airlines flying out of auction in and out uh, throughout the years. Um, and, and, and the county has been operating the airport um, efficiently for, you know, since 19, uh, well, since the 1930s back in the day, but, uh, but uh, we took control of um, airline service back in the 70s. For Camarillo Airport, mm -hmm. it is really interesting. Um, that was, uh, like I said before, the Oxnard Air Force Base. And um, what happened uh, there is um, through the BRAC process, when they were closing a couple of bases in the 70s, um, they were ready to close uh, the Oxnard Air Force Base. And the county was interested in opening um, a commercial uh, service airport in the county as well, like, you know, aside from Oxnard. Mm -hmm. and, um, we wanted that airport to provide the services that we provide today. And um, through a, a lot of negotiating, the county was able to get uh, the piece of land, 650 acres. We were able to use a runway, uh, a smaller portion than was there before. And um, we were just lucky to have it. I mean, um, if you look at, um, at one of the high schools, Camarillo High School. Camarillo High School, yeah. Yes. Um, they have their mascot right now is the scorpion, right? Right. Uh, some people think it's because of, like, you know, the insect or what you want to call it. But it's not due to that. It's due to the uh, Scorpion aircraft that used to be based at the Camarillo Airport. Okay. So, sure. you know, there's yeah. a lot of history. Yeah, there's, there really is a lot of history there. Mm -hmm. um, what, what is the economic impact um, of the airports to the economy? Well, um, airports uh, by themselves, they're economic engines. Mm -hmm. um, especially when an airline operates out of them. So just to give you an idea, in 2008, when we had five, five flights um, with uh, SkyWest out of the Oxnard Airport, we did an economic benefit study. Mm -hmm. And the airport actually supported 800, uh, well, actually, I'm sorry, 630 jobs. Um, and that includes like, you know, people that work for the hotels, for, the, right. for anybody who comes in, rental cars, and every, everybody else. That's about 600 uh, uh, people. And uh, it, it brought about $80 million to the local economy. Hmm. So we're very proud of that number. Now, Camarillo, even though it's a general aviation airport, what happens there is uh, there's more volume. Um, we have more tenants. We have more people that come in and visit. It's closer to now to the outlet malls. Um, so the economic uh, output for the community is about $160 million uh, per year. Mm, interesting. So yeah. it is, it is, they're economic engines. Yeah, yeah, they are for sure. So what, what do you foresee as the possibilities going forward for commercial service in, in, at the Oxnard Airport? Sure. Well, um, commercial service is always uh, something that uh, um, has really interested us. Um, you know, when United Airlines decided uh, trying to pull out uh, from Oxnard Airport, we try to keep them. Sure. We send out surveys to anybody who was using them, to anybody who wanted to continue to use them. And the response was great, but uh, they were just not willing to do it uh, because they were losing money. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the way that uh, they were handling their pricing structure was different than, than, than before, and they were losing money. Um, so right now, with um, everything that is going on with the airline industry itself, Everybody's trying to go to the large airports. All the airlines are consolidating. There's only five um, airlines at the moment mm -hmm. that uh, really operate from uh, major airports in the nation. Um, what th that has done is if anybody wants to start a new airline, a smaller airline, a regional airline, they're going to have a tough time um, trying to catch up with those big right. guys because they already have the money, they have the market, they have the capacity. So. For anybody to try to come into auction and fly to another route, it's really hard un unless the community really comes together mm -hmm. and um, um, is able to show the airline that need. Um, over the last uh, few years, um, since the airline left, I've been involved in traveling and meeting with uh, several airlines. And um, one of the things that they tell me is, yes, it's a capacity issue. Yes, it's that we're, we're like, you know, the bigger airlines are getting together. They're flying out of the larger airports. But one of the things that they want is for smaller communities um, to be able to use that airport. Mm -hmm. Because if, um, for example, we have the airport uh, LAX down south, 
if people from Ventura County are just going over there because of the frequency and the fare, then the, there's no reason why the airlines should come here. So we're looking for the businesses to come together, to come to the realization that they really need to use that airline, they really need to support an airline, and, um, and not only for the first year, but continuously. And then the airline is maybe going to look at our airport more seriously. Sure, sure, that makes a, that makes a lot of sense. L let me ask you, um, uh, there are some issues that arise, have arisen over time, um, like drones. How okay. do, maybe you could talk a little bit about drones and how they affect things. Okay. Sure. Um, the, the military obviously started using drones a long time ago. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, our director of airports, uh, his, uh, past, uh, in his past life, uh, he, he worked for a drone manufacturing company. Oh. So he has a lot of experience. And uh, uh, as the Department of Airports, we really support the use of drones in the community. But we want for that use to um, take into consideration safety mm -hmm. um, because we are uh, as you said before, we have many airports in Ventura County, so it would be really bad if a drone was flying close to an airport and created a, an accident. Uh, so we, in the, the, the FAA, um, at, at the moment, they have a, a, an app on your phone that you can actually go to and see where you're able to fly and where you're not able to fly when you're close to an airport. And um, if you're using a, a larger drone, mm -hmm. uh, those that may be in the thousand to hundred dollar range, they already have uh, e e equipment or they already come equipped with uh, some sort of software that tells them that they can fly or not yeah, fly yeah. depending on the location. But we as the Department of Airports, we support it. Um, we uh, put something online already. It's, um, it's basically a one-pager readme information, informational document that tells uh, um, drone users what to do if they're recreational or what to do if they're looking to charge money for it. And uh, the website, um, you know, since we're talking about it, I'll, sure. I'll share it. Yeah, that'd be good. It's uh, www.ventura.org forward slash airports. And they can go and, and see the picture of a drone on, on sure. our front page and click on it and get all the information that they can on sure. it. Sure. But not only drones, but they can go to their website to learn a lot more about Ventura airports in general. That is correct. There's quite a bit of information. That is correct. What, um, one last area just to uh, discuss, because I know you'd have some experience in that, and that'd be the noise factor at airports. Um, mm -hmm. I notice on the website you can call in if there's noise. I is that a problem at our airports? You know, in uh, comparison to other airports, uh, we don't have a noise problem. Yeah. We do have uh, maybe three or phone call four phone calls uh, per month, while other airports are maybe in the thousands. Um, we try to have a really good outreach uh, program, mm -hmm. um, not only to the neighbors, mm -hmm. but uh, to the pilots uh, themselves. Um, when somebody's trying to build around the airport, we go through a noise compatibility study and, and to see how yeah. compatible that new house, new development is going to be uh, to the airport. Uh, and um, and uh, if somebody calls in, the, we do have a, a noise line for mm -hmm. each airport. And uh, when they call in, we take the person's information, we try to identify um, the person who was flying, if mm -hmm. that person was flying, and we actually try to talk to that person, to, to, to yeah. the pilot, to tell them, hey, uh, we received a noise complaint from this area. Mm. Obviously, uh, in most situations, the pilot will be understanding and will be able to solve it, yeah. but in some situations, if that's the traffic pattern for the airport, there's not much that we can do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're coming to the end of our, our, sure. our time here, Jorge, and I, I want to thank you for taking the time to come here to our Ventura and, and uh, provide us this information. And I want to thank all of you for um, watching this program, and I look forward to seeing you again in the future.